Here goes $120. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, we're about to hit 100. I can feel the heat coming off of it too as well. You get scratched by my knife whatsoever. It and it doesn't leave any mark. That's even better than downstairs light. So we'll turn this on high and The Phoenix PD40R 2.0, right? <laughs> Too intense, not intense enough. PD40R 2.0. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so I don't think they should have named this PD40R 2.0 because this is not a 2.0 of the original flashlight. I think it is a completely different flashlight. The first flashlight was a little more round, I would say. It did have push buttons on them. And I did like how the other flashlight did stand up, but it actually creates a completely different beam than the other flashlight. The other flashlight created more of a floodlight. This flashlight has a spot in it. And as a home inspector, what I look for is I like to, I like to have that flood light in there. So whenever you, you have the three different, four different settings, yeah, you have the 30 lumen, the 350 lumen, the 1000 lumen, and then the 3000 lumen uh, portion of the flashlight. And then you have the strobe, which as a home inspector, you really don't need other than to blind yourself every now and then. Uh, so this flashlight's uh, really nice. I do like how it stands up like this. So whenever you stand up, you're in the attic, you can set the flashlight in place, shine it on the attic. Uh, you can even see it illuminates this whole room. Shine it on the attic and it, it projects the beam back down so you can work wherever you need to if your hands are busy. So this is a really nice flashlight. Also, it takes a second to get used to this rotary switch. The rotary switch is pretty nice. Uh, I actually even like it better than the other PD40 flashlight because whenever it was in your pocket, it would always go off. This is very intentional and uh, it operates really easy with the thumbs and, and the fingers and you can get to exactly what, where you want when you get used to it after a while. I use flashlights every day in the field and this flashlight right here is my favorite now. The, the only thing I dislike is that white spot. This white spot as a home inspector, it actually can white out water stains in the ceiling. So you wanna be really careful. You wanna make sure that whenever you're using it in the uh, rooms and stuff, you wanna kinda of do a rocking motion instead of pointing it right at the water stain because it will actually white out the water stain. Another thing I don't like on it is this clip right here. I have actually uh, knocked a piece of my knuckle out with this uh, clip whenever I was moving my ladder around. So make sure you just don't clip it onto your pants or anything. You just keep it in your pocket all the way in. Um, and the last thing I think is super annoying because I am very prone to losing things is the ports right here. The, they use a micro USB port. All my Android ports will not fit this. You need a very specific charging cable for this flashlight but it does charge and my old pd40r would only last two days this one lasts all week uh, which is super nice and i because i think i'm not turning it on in my pocket all the time it just it's very intentional whenever i use it and i really like this rotary switch right here so uh, isis and i are going to run around and test this equipment and you can already see i've been in the field for a little bit and there's some little minor nicks on the paint and whatnot, um, but overall it holds up. Um, I like it, it's a pretty hardy flashlight. So let's uh, go throw it against the wall, drop it in the toilet, <laughs> throw it, you know, drop it in the water because it says it's shockproof, waterproof, and uh, um, I don't know what other proof, but it does get really hot. Maybe we can throw the infrared on it and uh, get the temperature readings of how hot this flashlight gets. All right, cool. Let's go check it out. Right now it's about 88 degrees, so we're just gonna go straight to the hottest setting here. It'll jump up pretty quick, I'm, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, there it goes. Woo, that's kind of cool. So it's uh, 92 already. So you gotta imagine you're using this in the attic space. 
how hot this can get pretty quick on it. Oh, we're already about to hit 100. I can feel the heat coming off of it too as well. It's 103, but it's actually really neat. Look, it's keeping all the heat at the top here. It's not coming across the 108. Oh, there we go. 110. 14. <laughs> oh, 15. Yeah, I can feel the heat coming off the the beam here. So we can show it heating up my hand too. Oh yeah, it's burning my hand. And 20. Oh man, it's it's going. I'm 24, that's pretty hot. It's uh you can still keep your hands on it. It's a it does get a little hot to the touch. You can kind of see it on my fingers there. 25, huh? So it looks like it's capping out around there. So yep. It's sitting about 125 degrees. That's how hot this this bad boy gets. That's pretty neat. All right, the next phase is what I like to kind of do is a scratch proof. A lot of my older flashlights, it would, these lenses here would get scratched super, super easy. And I've had this for a while, it rides around in my toolbox and whatnot. And uh, I've noticed this, this glass here doesn't get scratched at all. You know, I'm not a, a flashlight person <laughs> or what kind of products they're using, but whatever it is, it works. It doesn't get scratched by my knife whatsoever it and it doesn't leave any marks because if you get these marks across your lens it actually distorts the beam a bit so that's a really cool feature and also you can kind of see the paint defects here but it actually it doesn't come easy it really has to knock against something and uh, uh, the flashlight doesn't scratch at all which I, I really like as a home inspector, the most likely area for me to drop my flashlight from the highest point is off my ladder. So we're just going to recreate that right here. And I'm going to turn the beam on. Not that the beam needs to be on, but we can see if it fails uh, in the test. Last time we did this, we dropped it, what, twice? Yeah, two or three times. So Here goes $120. <laughs> Ooh. took a small little hit there in the paint uh, the beam's still good the glass is still good that's nice we'll do it a few more times see if it actually can take a beating oh, that, that was a good My hit right there, rotary still works just fine. It's uh, taking a beating right now, so let's do it again. See how many times it <laughs> takes. Oh, oh, it flashed that time. I think that actually hit the rotary. Oh. They moved it. Yeah. Yeah, it still works. I said it holds up pretty good. Now we can see if it's still waterproof after it took that beating there. So that, so what we'll do is last time we filled up the sink and we turned it on and we just left it in there. Uh, the rotary does feel there's a slight movement in the, the rotary now. So uh, we'll kind of go from there, see if it holds up the water test. All right, so uh, the next test is we're going to drop it in the sink whenever it's filled up to make sure that it stays waterproof after taking a small beating. I know the average person isn't going to throw this flashlight off of a ladder, spin in circles, and then it drops in the water, but you never know, camping and whatnot, you drop it enough. It's supposed to be kind of a heavy-duty outdoors flashlight. That's the way they market it. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this sink up. This is, a, I'd say it's not cold water, it's not hot water, it's right there in the middle. We'll turn the flashlight on. We'll drop it in and see if it goes out. I don't know, do you think we voided the warranty? <laughs> think we voided the warranty on this flashlight? <laughs> All right.
So we'll turn this on high and yeah. It says that it's dust proof, it's waterproof, and this is with the uh, the beam on 3,000 lumens right now. So we'll just sit there and let it run. Last time we just dropped it in there. I got a little bit nervous, but we're gonna just let it sit there and stay on high. It's heating up the water. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's heating up. Yeah. It's like really warm now. Yeah, it's holding up pretty good. All right, it's, it's fully underwater now. Yeah. There's a small little air bubble there. Yeah, it's staying on. That's pretty cool. All right. What do you think? You think that passed? I think so. I think it passed. That's, yeah, that's in there, what, three times longer than we did last time? Yeah. All right. Rotary still works. Going through all the settings. Yep. It feels a little stiffer right now, but uh, might be due to the heat. I'm not sure. It still works. All right, the last test that we're gonna run this through is uh, in the attic space. Most of the time that we're in using flashlights in the home inspection field anyway is in the attic or other people in the dark, and this is the best way to recreate it. I think the beam says it goes up to 400 yards, the 3000 lumen beam. We don't need to go that far as home inspectors, but this is, uh, we'll test it. So we got, this is after I have thrown it, scratched it and dropped it in water for a few minutes. And now we're going to, and had it on the highest setting for a while. Now we're just going to light up the attic. So that's uh, 3,000 lumens. I'm at 330 lumens. I got it. <laughs> 30 lumens. So how's that look? You can see all the way back there. So that's the 350, which you can see, I mean, you know, as a home inspector, that's really nice. And then you have the 1,000 lumens which I, I think this was actually better than the PD-40, the regular one. That was really nice. I mean, I can see the quality of the wood all the way yeah. down on the wall down there. can see the other furnace. And then that's the 3,000. Wow. That's like, that's even better than downstairs light. That lights up the entire attic space. I, I'd say this is definitely better than the first PD-40 uh, yeah. flashlight. That white beam, I might be second guessing it. You just want to be careful on white drywall because that will uh, wash out the water stains. But yeah, that's, but it is really hot right now. I mean, I barely had it on and it right now it's pretty hot. So um, yeah, so far pretty good. We'll do the, the closing review. We can show you what's inside that box uh, that it comes in. If you made it this far in the video, you're lucky because what we're going to do, Isis and I, we're going to do a competition. And if you subscribe to our channel, leave a comment and then also Follow us on Instagram or leave a comment in there if you're already following us. We're going to take your names, drop them into a hat, and we'll draw it in, what, two weeks after the video has been posted. So that will help us grow the YouTube channel. And then also somebody gets the PD-40R 2.0. It is a really fantastic flashlight so far, and it did replace the PD-40R for me. Uh, even though I abused this one a little bit, it... The rotary wheel is just a slightly moving, but it still functions. And I'll keep you updated if it falls apart in my future videos too as well. Um, with that being said, we're going to just open up the box real quick and um, see what we get. See what, see what it looks like. A lot of people comment on boxes like, oh, the box is so fancy. I literally could care less about that. So it comes out pretty smooth. We'll just get all this stuff out here. 
And uh, you can kind of see the comparison of versus the, uh, the used one versus the regular one there. You can kind of see I've already abused it. It comes in this nice, shiny black color. And uh, it comes with this case. I tried to put this case on my belt. It fit too loose, and then I tossed it to the side. So you might, if you like cases of it being in the case, it does fit in there really well, but I didn't find it practical for it to fit on my belt because it literally just kind of like flopped around on my belt. So I, I don't know how this case is supposed to be used and don't care to find out. All right, so uh, the next thing is it does come with the, the wrist if you need safety protection. You know, some of my inspectors probably need this. <laughs> the losing the flashlight in the attic insulation or something. So you could throw that on there and loop it through, which is pretty nice. And the most annoying feature of this flashlight is this USB charging port, USB-C, USB-C USB charging port. I don't, I mean, I'm sure it has some sort of better charging feature for it, but the most annoying thing is you have to have a specific charger for this. I'm sure this will replace all Android chargers here in the future, but I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it. But uh, what, before you turn it on, you do need to open it up. It opens up pretty smoothly and you have to remove these paper pieces. And um, uh, the, sometimes there's one in there on the other Phoenix products, but there's not. You just tie it together and it's ready to go. So it's pretty easy. Uh, I forgot to say that there is a, a, a light indicator on the uh, levels solid green is like 80 to 100 percent below 80 percent to 50 percent is a blinking green and it will look somewhat like this let's see if it comes on yeah you can see that's a uh, solid green so this still has a lot of light even after abusing it a little bit and uh, below 50 is red and then below 10 percent is blinking red and it's pretty much going to die so uh, after 50 percent it only stays on one beam it won't go above 350 i believe so that's it uh, with the YouTube channel. If you like this type of content, please hit that like and subscribe button um, and follow us on the next one. The, we do put this flashlight on our tool list, which will be located below. You can see my other home inspection tools that I use in the field and um, catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.